From March of 1999 until today, QQQ has returned over 585.93%, beating the overall S&P 500 by 351% in that same time period. Now, typically when I do videos with calculations, I use QQQ as my anchor, but oftentimes I'll get comments about what about QQQM. And today we're going to dig into the real differences. Should you ditch QQQ and just buy into QQQM instead? Hmm. Well, right over here is what we're going to be covering in today's video related to the verses of both of these funds. Now, they are both ran by Invesco. This is the financial company that oversees both QQQ and QQQM. Now, QQQ was originally introduced in March of 1999. It has gone through things such as the tech bubble crash of 2000. It also went through 9-11 as well as the great financial crisis of 2008 and 2009. And QQQM is a relative new newcomer launched in March of 2020. Now this alone is why I typically lean on QQQ for most of my calculations in my other videos because it has a longer time period. But these are basically the same exact fund. But why? Why would Invesco launch the same bloody fund as its original QQQ? Why the, the M? What's the deal with that? Well, there are two major reasons. First, the cost of this fund. Now I recommend go over to seekingalpha.com and check on the prices today on what day you're watching this video. But as of the recording of this video, if we look right here at QQQ, it is going for $367 per share. That's quite a lot of money for one share. If we compare that to QQQM, it's only going for $151 per share. So Invesco launches QQQM with the hope to attract new investors that might be a little bit turned off by the high price of the original fund. So they're gonna opt for a better price. It's a little bit more attractive, so people tend to buy into it. And it has actually worked quite a bit. If you look at the assets under management now at 12 billion, I think it was only at like 3 billion when it first got started. So it is increasing in overall assets flooding in to QQQM. But the second reason is actually the more real reason that this fund actually exists. If we look at the original fund and we zoom in on expense ratio, you see it sitting at 0.20%. Best way to calculate that is pull up your calculator, put 0.20 and then click on the little percentage button that'll convert it into a decimal. Then multiply it by your portfolio balance invested into QQQ. We'll say it's $10,000. That means for every $10,000, you will be spending $20 on the investment management fees that's pulled out of your portfolio. You do not actually have to pay that via a bill or something like that. But look at QQQM. The expense ratio is only 0.15%. So you're actually saving 0.05 percentage points on the expense ratio. So you might ask yourself, well, that seems kind of silly. Why don't you just cut the original QQQ down to 0.15%? in the world of ETFs where expense ratios continue to go lower and lower. Take a look at some of these Vanguard funds at 0.06% or even lower, and some funds now have a 0% expense ratio. So in this world, why not just take QQQ and make it a little bit more attractive by taking it down 0.05%? That's a great question. You got to realize that Invesco was already raking in hundreds of millions of dollars based on the assets under management. Have a look at that right now. $201 billion in assets under management for QQQ. They're making all kinds of money on that 0.2% expense ratio. Why give that up? And this fund is still the go-to for people that are looking to add tech exposure in their portfolio. So if it's in the top five ETFs overall, why mess with a good thing? Instead, let's lower the price, let's lower the cost, attract new investors, and we'll make even more money. That's ultimately what went through Invesco's mind. Now, they can deliver on that, they can still make money, and they can capture more of the market with QQQM. So if you're an investor that's just starting off and you're like, hey, I don't want to spend $367 a share, I want to spend a little bit less, well, typically you're going to opt for QQQM, plus you're going to save money on the expense ratio. But here comes the big question. Which one should you just buy into? If you're interested in this type of fund, you want to get in on the NASDAQ 100 index, which one is better for you? Well, it depends on what type of investor you are. Because if I add QQQM into our charting and compare it to QQQ here on Seeking Alpha, you basically don't see an orange and a blue line. It's like together. They track the same way. You're getting what you get. They are, I mean, within like, okay, a little bit of a percentage, but they're typically returning the same amount. But as to what type of investor you are, let's first talk about liquidity and spread. One of the best ways you could do this is just looking right here on the one year for QQQ and looking down here, all of this, this little gray line that keeps popping up, that represents volume of flooding into and out of this particular fund. Now we're looking at QQQ. This one is highly liquid. 
This is the one that if you're interested in maybe going in and going out of this fund very quickly, let's say you want to day trade it. Let's say you want to just hold it for a short period of time, less than one year. First, make sure you're aware of the tax implications of doing that. But second, this is going to be a better liquid fund. And I'll explain what that means in just a minute, but have a look here. So we're talking about like right there, you can see it says $48 million in one day. Up here at the top, we have a little bit more volume picking up. 80.93 million flooding in to QQQ. We compare that to QQQM, look at the volume. I mean, you don't even see as many gray spikes over the last year. Maybe a little bit right here, but even that alone is only 8.2 million. But typically, we're looking at $500,000 or less. But with less volume, that's what matters. If you're trying to go in and out very quickly on something like QQQM, you got to be wary of that little volume because it's something called spread. Ultimately, what you're doing is you're probably spending more money based on the spread of the bid and the ask. So for a new beginner, this doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, you're a long-term investor. You're going to buy into QQQM. Maybe you're going to keep buying at regular intervals and you're going to wait like 10, 20, 30 years from now. That's great. But in a short period of time, if you're trying to go in and go out very quickly, especially if you're a day trader, you don't want the price to be on a far spread. Because if it's going for $151 and you're trying to get out quickly and the spread on it, the bid and ask are so far and so wide at like 150 or 152, that could make a big difference. Whereas here, you're typically gonna keep very close to what the actual price is of QQQ. A little bit more advanced, but that's really the big difference there. So ultimately, if you're like, whatever that all means, you may just be a long-term investor. So at that case, it's really up to you. You can buy either one of them. You can see the performance is the same, but QQQM might be a little bit easier to get in, save yourself some money on the expense ratio, and hold for a very long time. And as time ticks on, I'll start using QQQM in my future calculations so we can see how that one is actually trending against some of our other favorite ETFs and the overall stock market. If you like personal finance, make sure you subscribe, but you gotta check out this video next. And we'll see you on the next video.